Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tom Devine. I'm with AB Pro Edge, and we are going to talk be talking about something that is really exciting. Um, you know, AB Pro Edge does matrix switching. We are a leader in matrix switching, and we are revamping our entire matrix switch line. Some of you may be familiar with who were on the Axion 4 um, product training, but now we have our flagship uh, chassis-based system, the Axion X. And so today what we're going to do is I actually have a special guest with us. I have our CTO, Matt Murray, um, on the horn with us today. And he and myself are going to be going over this product. We're going to give you, the, um, you know, from top to bottom exactly what this product is, what it does, how you work with it, and what kind of installations that you're going to be able to fit that into. Um, a, few, a little housekeeping stuff right away. Um, we do have a questions tab. So if you check your GoToWebinar control panel, there's a questions tab there. We want you to be asking questions. Uh, the, the more questions we get, the better the training is. So please ask your questions there. If you're at any time having trouble hearing us or anything like that, you can also put that in the questions tab and we'll be monitoring that the entire time, making sure that we're addressing that. If you are watching this later um, through YouTube as a recording, thank you so much for joining us here. And you know there's a comment section right below. Please put any of your questions you have right into the comment section and we are monitoring that and make sure that we'll get all your questions answered. So without further ado, let's get into what this uh, uh, product is. So as you can see, um, this silver box right here is the AC Axion X. So this is a chassis built uh, matrix switcher system that is 100% customizable for your installation. And you choose exactly what this matrix switcher does. This, if you are familiar with our 16 by 16 chassis based system, this is the next evolution of that system. Um, so it is capable of doing the full HDMI 2.0 specification that includes 4K at 18 gigabit, HDR signals, Dolby Atmos, Dolby uh, uh, Vision, and everything under the sun. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look in, at, at this product. So video distribution that fits your next installation. And that's what the, the main um, part of this product is going to be. And as you know, video distribution is a must for truly custom AV installations. Um, so here now, um, video distribution, it's a must. You guys know that with all the advancements in HDMI technology, you know, you have new formats coming out, new audio formats coming out. And what can happen when all of these things are always consistently changing is that it can be difficult for the integrator to put together these jobs like they have over the last 10 years. Uh, things are always changing and, and, and evolving. And what we did with this product is we try to put the tools in place so that all, no matter what is happening, no matter what changes come about, whatever, no matter what kind of signals you're seeing, you're going to be able to um, manage the switch and manage the distribution flow to be able to um, send stable, smooth video signals throughout. So that's what we're talking about, our flagship video distribution product, and that is the Axion X. Um, as I said, engineered with the, with the um, integrator in mind. This device, as we go through it today, you'll see that it actually is built for the integrator. All the features that we are putting in this isn't necessarily for the end user, though the end user does benefit. It really is for the integrator and for installation to go smoothly and easily and so that you can get a, a, a very luxurious, high-end video distribution, audio video distribution system um, throughout it. So um, now we can see uh, the back end of this. So as you see right on your screen here, guys, we have slid open the chassis base system and you see the different input cards. So you kind of get a, a, an idea of how this works. On the back of it, you have your inputs and outputs and we can select as you make a purchase for this product or as you um, build this product out, you get to choose how many inputs and outputs um, make up this card. So it has spots for 16 inputs and 16 outputs, but you can manipulate that to be whatever you'd like it to be. If you needed it to be an eight by 12 or a six by 16, you can change that um, selecting all the individual cards. And I'll bring Matt on here in just a second to go over all of those individual cards. But on a high level approach, when you um, install this system, you are getting 
4K at 18 gigabits per second, 18 gigabits over category cable using our own proprietary ICT compression technology that uh, is, is engineered to deliver the highest quality picture possible. You actually have mission critical scaling as well, which is a different type of technology that puts this product into some environments that you may not originally think that it's going to fit in. But more importantly, maybe the biggest innovation that we have is our AV Pro Edge user interface. And we are gonna do a deep dive into that today and look at our entire user interface built from the ground up for integrators. And I think that's gonna be really the, the um, watershed moment for a lot of people when they realize why you should be using Axion. Uh, you do have independent audio routing. So this can be built as a audio video but emphasis on the audio matrix as well with our audio only card that we'll go over. You have your own, um, build your own uh, EDID tools, which we call extreme EDID management. Um, and then you can also have down mixing capabilities. So we could take like 30 channels from a Dolby Atmos signal and we are able to down mix that into two channels so we can send it throughout an entire system, but keep that uncompressed, un, um, you know, uh, a undown mix signal for that home theater. And we'll talk about that as well throughout here. Um, with that down mix, we're adding some different presets that allows you to control what the mix is like um, with, with a few different presets and we'll cover that as well. So that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, the the um, matrix switcher, which is called the Axion X. And um, if we wanna take a little bit of a closer look here, I'm just going to show you that you can see here's the front of it at the very top and then you have the back of it. Each one of these slots um, is a two input and on the right hand side is two output. You will see some additional ports um, and Matt will explain that when we go into the individual cards. You will see that you have a de-embedded audio, uh, 16 of them. So for each input that you have, you can actually de-embed that audio out as well with IR extension. Um, you have RS-232 control and control through um, IP. This is where you can customize your chassis is with these different cards. So these are the different types of cards that can fit in different configurations depending on what your installation calls for. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, I think Matt is going to um, be taking over here shortly, but I just want to let you guys kind of know how you order this customizable switcher. So at first you're gonna order the base chassis. That's going to be this unit right here with zero cards. Then you need to ask yourself some questions, figure out what the installation needs, find out what your installation calls for. And at that point, you're gonna ask yourself, how many inputs do I have? You know, inputs come in pairs, so um, you're going to always be at an even number for inputs and outputs, um, but you'll be able to determine as close as you can to that even number, how many inputs you need. Um, then you'll have to have how many outputs, how many TVs or projectors are in the system, and you'll choose that for your output cards. Then you need to ask yourself some questions. Um, is Michigan mission critical scaling something I need? Is down mixing something I need? How many sources will I need to down mix? After you have that, the answers to those questions, you can order your input and output cards. And if you are having any troubles when you are putting in that order or not sure exactly what to do, no problem. You just give us a call and we'd have one of our uh, uh, reps be able to walk you right through the different cards and help you build your system. And if you have any HD base T, you will just want to make sure that you have the transmitters if it's on HD base T inputs or receivers if it's on HD base T outputs. So that's how you're going to actually order the uh, customizable switcher. Um, and you will be able to do that through all your different methods. So now, as you can see, we're going to go into the actual input cards here, but I'm going to have Matt take over. He, Matt is, uh, you know, a founder of our company and the CTO, the man behind this, um, this product. And so I'm going to make him the presenter. We'll take turn it over to you, Matt. And um, I thank you guys for um, paying attention and, and letting me open up the training for you. All right, Matt, I, we are not able to hear you. So I don't know if you are still switching over. Yeah. You should be there able to hear me now. And you, should, and you should see my screen now, too. We sure can. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, like Tom had kind of said, um, 
a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we put into this product came from a lot of dealer feedback so there's a lot of things you'll see in here uh, especially if you're a current dealer or distributor um or rep of ours that you've probably been getting feedback on of things that we could do to improve and and the axion product and the and the new user interface is really um has been kind of a culmination of taking all that feedback and trying to deliver something a little more powerful um better for dealers better for the end users easier to service et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you'll see that as we go through but um, one of the other things that happened is we added a lot more flexibility uh on the on the cards that are available for this so it truly is becoming an ecosystem and uh, and i want to kind of go through what is here right now which you'll see on these slides and what will be coming in the future too so um just to get through these one by one you've got the the standard input card that's the um the one on the on the top left there the axion NAUHD. That's a dual 18 gig input, but what we did here um, to kind of modify these a little bit was made them one so that they can be uh, have diagnostics, diagnostics built into the UI, but also um, added loop outs to these. So we got that request quite a bit where, you know, um, we needed loop outs so that we, maybe we could stack matrices for larger systems. So uh, oftentimes in residential settings, when you're looking for native uncompressed video, um, AV over IP kind of was the only option if you needed more than 16 rooms. So this is going to take this to that next level, really. So um, you can now do, you know, 16 by 32 if you wanted to. So this works really nicely in a residential setting um, to kind of get that, you know, if you're looking for uncompressed video. We added the HD base T input cards here on the top right. So this is um going to be if you have a, a remote zone this accepts all of our hd base d transmitters uh that are that are out there even the um, 18 gig hd base d transmitters so this is good if you want a card for like a remote uh blu-ray player or something that's out in the field uh, that needs to get back to the head end uh, this is a good option for that this is also going to play big in the commercial space too for um using this switcher as kind of the the, the head end for, for everything. This can pull all your conference rooms and stuff in with wall plates. Um, the AVDM input again, that's a, this is a refresh of, of what it was on the original 16 by 16 with the additional loop outs there so that you can um, manage that. It does have a little bit more beefy DSP that we put in as well that we'll talk about. Um, and you'll see some really cool things to manage in the UI once we dig into that. So MCS, this is a big change. Um, we had the scaling input cards and output cards before, but the the this really stepped the technology up and it's it's called mission critical scaling. And where this came from is is some of our customers who are doing a lot of things in the medical space really needed um, instantaneous switching and um, needed to be able to use 4K6444, do some scaling and things like that to, to make seamless switching and, and maintain handshakes and stuff so there's no no uh, dead time on screens. Um, and that's why this exists. So you have these MCS input cards and you have these MCS output cards. And you can use the MCS with any... Um, with any configuration of the switch but if you're using the hd base t output you need to use the sc2r so that's the only caveat to keep everything um, instant and seamless for uh, for switching so just keep that in mind and let me see i think i see a question oh yeah okay uh, this is this is the body of CS, and we do get a little bit um, we do get a little bit more into that, and then I'll show you also on the UI. It'll kind of make sense um, why that exists and what the limitations are. So these are your four primary input cards uh, right now, and uh, and there's not really others um, that are that are coming anytime soon. But this this pretty much should cover most of what we need out there. Um, for right now, and then we'll look at the connection diagram real, real quick here. 
Oh, no, sorry. We updated this. I forgot about one very special card that a lot of dealers have, have looked at. We added this up today because these are on the way to us now. Um, but basically what this does is this allows you to insert the audio into the system and uh, route it out of the extracted audio ports to utilize the, um, you know, the, the amplifier in the system and, and kind of get it into your system that way. And then also uh, you can embed this onto an HDMI stream too. So if you route it, like let's say input 12 was an audio only input, you can then route that out of an HDMI output for, for audio only. And this actually does support toss link, so you can kind of see them in this picture. It's these little holes. It's a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you're going to start seeing that on, on some of our products where there's limited space. That uses, it's, it's a mini toss link connector. So that is an actual high bandwidth connector. So you could put in multi-channel audio in here uh, if you needed to as well. So this is out ready to go. You'll see how that looks on the UI as it gets identified on the system. And then we have our, our output cards. So you've got your standard output card, which is just your, um, your dual output card. You've got your M MCS output card. That's going to be the other side of the, the scaling card. Um, and then you have the HD base T output cards, which um, has the, has the one mirrored output on it. And then your HD base T transmitters that we talked about, which, we have a little spreadsheet that if you guys don't have it, um, we'll probably just have Tom send it to all of you after um, after this anyways, where it gives you kind of all of the available transmitters, all of the available receivers, and all of the uh, available input and output cards to configure these how you want to. So um, this is where we'll mention kind of what is coming out just so you guys kind of know what's on the roadmap. There's fiber output cards coming. There are ARC slash eARC output cards coming that will support uh, that audio return channel. And then we also have uncompressed um, HD base T as well um, that will also support ARC and eARC. So there is some, some new cards that are going to be coming down the road for the output side of things so that you guys can um, manage the the display side and the TV apps and all that stuff as well, and also get get fiber out of this. So those are the output cards. Here's a connection diagram. Um, you know, pretty pretty straightforward here. Sixteen sources, sixteen outputs, um, and you can really do any combination of of, uh, of input and output configuration. So here's the stuff that kind of makes this more special. So these are the things that we've really added and spent a lot of time on. One is the user interface. Um, we will show you that and we will um, explain that a lot. And I, and I think that that will um, shed a lot of light on what we're doing, but that really set the stage for us to be able to do a lot of things um, and be able to manage these things much better. But that's that's kind of the crux of everything. And the, the user interface is really a critical element to this. Part of what that does is gives us the centralized command routing. Um, and what that allows you to do is virtually send in any command that you want via um, the network. So this command goes in and then you can come out of a, an HD base T receiver um, or a fiber receiver when those come or an HDMI output um, using CEC, but you can use IRRS-232 or CEC all virtually. Uh, and we've actually built these in already to the drivers. So an example of this is if you're if you're a control four programmer, all you need to do is create a binding from the HD base T receiver to the TV. And if you're running an IR bug or you're hooked up to RS-232 or you're just plugged in by HDMI, you just make that binding and then uh, and then the driver does the rest for you. You don't even know need to know the command. You don't need to embed an IR. You don't need to uh, embed an RS-232 code or anything. So that's one of the advantages that this kind of cloud system has given us. It's really, really simplified that proce process for installers. So you don't have to embed anything. It takes half the work away. So um, the, cl the cloud enabled also gives us the ability to uh, host our firmware remotely. Um, and that's at firmware.avproedge.com. So if anybody's 
ever wants to see what firmwares are out there, they're there, but um, that's where we pull them down from. And, um, and this also gives us the ability to do this cloud to cloud communication. So that means that if you're using Control 4, if you're using Oversee, if you're using Crushtron, if you're using um, Excite, if you're using any of these monitoring type systems, one, you can tunnel into the IP and basically have, you know, fully robust control of everything up to and including firmware and troubleshooting. Um, but this allows us to do cloud to cloud communication. So when you're using your remote monitoring system, there are um, basically, you know, hoops you have to jump through in order to be able to share communication back and forth. So we have the ability to establish cloud to cloud communication using REST APIs and be able to um, essentially integrate this with a lot of third party stuff. One uh, one thing that's going to be coming out soon is is uh, an integration with Josh AI that allows us to do voice casts so we can connect to Josh AI's cloud and pull down Josh's responses. And now we can play back those responses out of our extracted audio port. So if you have a control for home uh, or, or a home that has Josh AI integrated and you're standing in the living room, the responses from Josh can now come out of your living room overhead speakers instead of the little uh, micro on the wall. So that's just an example of, of the power that this has as we um, start to be able to to add more and more functionality. So we still have the HDR support. So as far as what the video support we have is is the same. So you know this was really a focus on. Um, how do we make this more robust? We we had the picture quality thing down, um, and that's still really really good. And like I said, it's going to be it's going to be going uncompressed. So um, with the um, MCS, so let's talk about this for just a, a few minutes. Basically, what this is doing, if you if if you have an MCS input and an MCS output, what you're doing is you have we have an extra chip inside of there that does advanced scaling. So when the signal comes in, uh, we can scale it to what it will uh, what will be the most compatible to the MCS output card, and then we can also scale it again then to the the TV. So what we're doing is we're scaling in and we're scaling out. So for the long and short, if you do that um, and grab the signal on the way in and, and buffer it, you essentially can create instant switching. So if you're asking about when a dealer would require this, the thing that the, it's if they want instant switching, they want 4K60, 444 video, um, they don't mind um, using scalers. Because sometimes if you're using HDR, your HDR tone mapping can change. So it is it is a discussion on, you know, is the customer needing everything to be native, then they're probably going to be okay with with TVs and things to have to resync, right? Because that's the only way to get the truly native experience is things do have to drop signal and resync on the current HDMI 2.0 uh, spec. 2.1, that'll probably get a little better, but um, that's the way it is. But what when you can use this is two channel systems um, that it can support high bit rate audio. These cards don't support that, but they can support HDR. Um, so my ideal scenario is if there's not a theater in the house, um, this would even be similar to um, a friend of mine's house. You know, no no theater in the house. They just have a lot of what I call passive viewing TVs and then living room TV. Um, their two channel system they, they have all overhead speakers everywhere and this just gives them instant switching so um, and you still get really high quality picture it's just not going to be native and it does do hdr tone mapping for you so if you use hdr you can use this but it's um it's close to the original but it's not the original so just keep that in mind so one instant switching um doesn't necessarily need HDR and doesn't need multi-channel audio. That's when you need it. Um, there, there is latency added into the scaling. It's about it's about like five milliseconds though. So it's it's nothing that really um, 
is even going to create anything. So, um, by, you know, human standards, that latency is negligible. So it's, it's almost like there's no latency and there's no latency in the rest of the si system as well. So you would basically be sitting at about five milliseconds with that. Um, audio down mixing. So, um, at this, this has, we've been doing this for a while. I'll show you what's new in it. This essentially takes your multi-channel audio, turns it into two channels so that you can distribute into those zones that, that just have overhead speakers. Um, audio de-embedding. So we have the ability to um, extract audio. Um, this can be bound to output, bound to input, bound and, and, and done as a matrix as well. So we can route that down mixed extracted audio anywhere we want volume control is in there this is improved on this model so um, it's a zero to 100 smooth ramp versus a zero to 20 bumpy ramp so that was a, a major complaint from from dealers that you know it doesn't line up with the control systems and, and it, and it uh, doesn't meet the end users expectations because the volume there it's it's not finite enough so this is now a zero to 100 scale uh, and easier installation. So now we'll take a look at the interface. Um, let me get that up. So this is what the UI looks like now. And this is consistent across all of our products, by the way. So everything that's a matrix or that's connected is going to get this facelift um, with all of these, these features on it. So we can still do our matrix. You can see in here, it's detecting that I have some different cards. So we've got uh, regular inputs, MCS inputs, AVDMs, HD-based Ts, and audios. So the machine detects what card is inside. Um, and then I can do my matrixing here. I can matrix my audio right here. Um, you know, it's a little bit different than you're used to where we've kind of made it so that uh, it's a lot easier to use. and. Um, and you can even lock this out so that you as the, the integrator can leave this page accessible for an, an end user and they can still do switching here. But basically you choose your input and then you route it to whatever output you want. You have your IR routing. So the IR is set up to be routable on this current machine. So you can route it anywhere you want. Um, and then your IR back channel as well if you have transmitters in there. So anything that can be matrix will be added to this page if you have it enabled. So let's get into um, the good stuff here. So this is going to pull up. Um, it's got the labels. We can enable, disable it. You can see where we have modified the EDIT management to where you're going to, it's not just a list of 50 different EDITs because the list was kind of getting unwieldy. Um, Yes, there's a question here. Can the entire unit do an update for all cards? And the answer is yes. So when you update, it's one click. And if the cards need to be updated, they will be updated as well. Um, and I'll show you the, the firmware process here in a second. So um, the EDA building, uh, it, it, it became more relevant or prevalent that we needed to change the way we were doing this because there's so many different things. So now the installer can choose their uh, format whether they want 3D or not, whether they want HDR or not, and what kind of audio they want. And then they can build the EDID right there. So if we look at some of these other cards um, down here, so in AVDM, that's the AVDM input card, you have an extra option here. So the machine is, is dynamically detecting what card is in, what firmware is available, and what it can do. And we've added these new... Um, they're called down mix quotients. Um, and what these are is the amount, the level that we're mixing in for, um, for this two channel output. Um, and this came directly from dealer feedback that some customers didn't like the, um, you know, the, the voice was unintelligible because of the way it was down mixed. And the reason that was, was because, um, you're required to down mix minus three dB on the center channel to maintain the surround effects per Dolby and DTS specifications. So um, by default, it still has to be that way. But what we've done is we've uh, made it so you have a, a center channel one dB bump, two dB bump, and three dB bump on the center channel. That's what low, mid, and high is. And then you have middle FX, which is basically going to um, focus mostly on the center channel. 
voice FX is, is, um, like 80% just the center channel and then the surround stuff. And then full effects is kind of a, a, a flat blend of all of them. And these are good because you can, you can set it up based on not only the room, but the room impacts this, but sometimes the customer may just want to hear the voice, you know, so you can give them what they want, you know, they'll still hear background noise and stuff, but really when you're watching a movie or something that, you know, you, you may just want to hear the voice. So, that's there. So the options pop up, you know, when and when and if they're available. Um, and that's, that's how you can build your edits. There's a couple of new settings here um, that some installers, if they've gotten into the woods with us on, on some of these things on the old products, we could do it, but it required um, some communication by a serial and stuff to do it. But basically right on, right on the fly, you can enable or disable Dolby MAT. So that can save you a ton of headaches in a distributed system to be able to, to manage this. And you can govern what Dolby Vision version is going to work. So you as the installer can understand what TVs were purchased or if there's a mix or whatever's in there. And you, and you get to make the determination on whether or not you're using low latency or original Dolby Vision, which that's very powerful for you to have that just right there at your fingertips. So. And you can see down here, we'll look at our video output settings. Um, you've got your enable, disabled, and see there's scaling. If the scaling is available, it will give it to you. Um, and then you have right here the advanced timing and formats for the MCS card. So if you look, this is an MCS card and what you can scale to. So here's our standard card. We can do 4K to 1080. That's it. If we want to do more advanced, especially in commercial, or let's say the customer has a zone or a couple zones that are 720p TVs or something, you know, you only need to buy one of these cards. You don't need to build the whole matrix with this. So it really gives you that flexibility. You could have a whole native house and then you can have a kitchen and a bathroom that have a 720p TV. Then you can use this just to make sure that that TV stays stable all the time. Um, but I have all of these formats I can use. It has a really creative mode called self adapt, which what it does is it looks downstream at the device it's connected to, um, reads the heated and finds its preferred timing and sets itself to that. So that's a really nice mode there too. And then you can see we have our VESA resolutions um, to accommodate for uh, commercial displays and display port and things like that. So that's what the MCS gives you. Um, and it, and it is a, it's a very powerful feature for, um, for anybody who's, who's doing commercial, especially, but like I said, it's a problem solver big time. Um, and you don't need to mix the inputs with the outputs, by the way, you only need the inputs. You know, I would say if you're, um, really wanting that instant, instant switching, um, if you, if you get the output cards, it'll be pretty much seamless but it won't be instant so just remember that and then i have the hd base t output cards here and you can see i have a little more control over the the uh, the audio there um here's my extracted audio setting so you can see my uh, volume i can ramp now um here's where i can change it from matrix bind input bind output i have um, my settings right here so i have an eq on the actual output so remember before we're talking about the downmix quotient, which is how the audio is managed as it comes into the machine. And now when we talk about how the audio goes out of the machine, we have some equalization here as well. So if you're still not satisfied, you have some, um, some, some EQ you can do right here. And obviously you have your, your fade that you can do. So that fader works. And then you also have your um, audio delay you can set right here. So some of these things were possible before, like delay, but it, it just, we didn't have this intuitive UI that really made it simple for people to use. So this is our advanced IR setting. So generally speaking, you don't need to do anything with this, um, but especially for um, the Crestron integrators of the world that maybe are doing some some really custom stuff. You can route every IR port on this machine to any IR port on this machine. 
from transmitters, from receivers, from directly on the core box and everything. And that includes RS-232 as well. Um, alrighty, and let's go look at the system page. So this is um, kind of the brain page and I'll run through this really quick. We, you can see that we have our IP settings here. You can change how the IP is, is, is addressed. Um, we have a way to lock this web interface. So that's been a big ask. So we can do admin, uh, admin. So what that does is when I apply that, you can see that now um, it's locked out of all the settings except for the matrix. So I can still access the matrix um, and make switching happen, but I cannot do anything until I log into this. So now I'm back in and you can see I've got my, my system back up here. And you can even do a user level. So I'm gonna make sure I change these so I know what they are. Okay, so if I apply that, now what's gonna happen is if I log out, so now see if I'm, I can't access anything unless I have a, a user login. So user will log in and now see the user can access the, um, the matrix page. Okay, so I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna get back in as an admin. And now I'm back in so I can manage the whole system. So, um, that's there and obviously that could be disabled. We've got our cloud services agreement, you know, so if I want to enable cloud services, uh, what that does is that allows this machine now to, uh, after you read the privacy policy and the terms of use, you can enable this and this will allow you, uh, this machine to now communicate to our servers and other servers. So this is cloud connectivity in general. Um, Fan speed is here. It's auto, so it's it's heat controlled. This was this has been a huge issue for a lot of integrators is the fan noise. So uh, we feel that we have that um, pretty well resolved. Um, these fans, these machines actually typically will work on on one most of the time. Um, so if you really need it real, real, real quiet, you can do that. Auto is recommended, but um, you can make the call there and. I just wanted to jump out and jump back in and see if there was a firmware update available because if there's a firmware update available on the cloud, it will pop right here and say there's a new firmware update. Would you like to do it now? Otherwise, down here um, below, we have our keypad lock LCD timeout. You can turn that off as well. Um, and then you can see our system temperatures um, and our microcontroller temperatures, all the current firmware versions there of every card gets reported. Factory reset, reboot, um, self-explanatory what those do, but this is how you can do firmware. You can upload it from a, uh, a file. So see, I've just pulled up here and then you can go search your desktop and find the file if we've given you the firmware, or you can download it from firmware.avprovides.com. This is the repository for all the firmwares or support.avproedge.com. If you guys aren't using support.avproedge.com, I highly recommend you, you take a look at this now. Um, you know, it's really gotten robust. All the firmwares are out here. Um, you know, here's a, an example of an article, you know, control for initial driver, driver setup, pre-commissioning. There's just lots and lots of data out here now. Um, so just keep that in mind. But firmware is all over there on support.avproedge.com, firmware.avproedge.com if you need to download it. Or you can simply click check for update. If this thing's available, it will find the update, download the file. Um, and as you asked Sammy, if there's multiple files for multiple card types, it will identify that. And it will update those all with, uh, you know, the integrator can press a button and walk away. So they don't have to sit and babysit a firmware update anymore. Um, and this will actually do um, dependency checking as well, of course. So if, if, you know, something, if it needs to be updated before it can be updated, it will do that as well. 
diagnostics page, um, we have the, uh, let's see if we can find one that, I don't have one with one plugged in, uh, but that's okay. So basically what you get is you have your input monitoring. So it's gonna read the Eden uh, or tell you what Eden is present. And that's gonna give you the info right there. You can reset the connection here if you want. You can enable, disable this, but then you get this signal info over here. <laughs> so you actually can see what is hitting that input in great detail. You get the timing, the color space, what kind of video it is, the HDCP version, the bit depth, the bandwidth that is needed to make that work. So you're going to get on the front end. I plug this source in, it's going to tell you, oh, that source is giving you 16 gigs. So you better make sure you have that available. The metadata type is going to be there, what the audio type is going to be there right there. So as you're seeing things downstream in the system and things aren't looking how you want them to look, or you're not getting audio in this out of this TV or this zone, you can go right here and now you have an analyzer for every single source that you plug into this thing. So um, this is very, very powerful. We have the output information. So if you're connected to a display or whatever it is, you can see this one here is connected to an ASUS. So it will read the monitor name, give you the device type, the preferred timing, the audio formats, and whether it supports deep color or 3D. Um, gives you what source is active right now and then you can also send um, and see you'll see these question marks here too those are those are to help you um, kind of navigate this more but you can send see this is an HDMI output so you can send right here a CEC command so if you have a driver or something or, or you're sending a CEC command and it's not working you can test it right here this is the this is a direct feed fast pass to that particular output to test CEC. The HD base T output obviously gives you a little bit more. Um, and you have link status info that um, what you'll, uh, well, I'll go through all of these basically. So you're going to get the same stuff on your EDID if it's connected to stuff. We can send our CEC, but see, we can also send our RS-232 commands right here too. So we can send test RS-232 commands from here. And our HD base T um, info will file out. And what you're gonna have is you're gonna have an error count. So you're gonna get to see what your error count is. And, um, and, and since most people, including myself, don't really know what that means off the top of my head, we've made the machine um, calculate the checksum for you. So you can essentially, um, you're gonna have a, a red, green, or a red, yellow, um green scenario so it's gonna show you some numbers that'll be red yellow or green it'll it'll identify if you need to re-terminate a cable or something um you know and just tell you what's going on so now you have some actual hd base t link info instead of just kind of guessing you're going to know the quality of that link and whether that link is capable of handling the signal that you're trying to put through it so that's all going to be right there and then um, finally, and then if there's different output types and stuff, um, they will, they'll show appropriately. So, uh, there's your MCS output again. So they'll, they'll show here. All right. So let me go to the console. So what this is, instead of having to, um, instead of having to communicate by an RS-232 cable, you can go here, the console is built into the machine. So if something just isn't working, you know, you can send a command into it and you can get responses off the machine. So you really get um, the ability to fully control this thing through the whole entire API. Um, and this is where we'll go to, you know, it's like if I want to run a status command, boom, I get all my status right there. If I want to do, you know, um, how's every, you know, what, what mode is everything in? You can run it and get it right there. And then you can export this log, save this log. You can clear the console, obviously. Um, but what also is coming soon is the ability to send this log directly to tech support. Um, and there will be a remote management, um, um, service as well for this.
And let me see if I can get that. Okay, so this is coming in. Um, and this is essentially what uh, we're working with um, a company called Excite to do some customization, which anybody can sign up for, uh, but we're gonna have this available too, where um, you can have your machines um, out there in the field. And basically let's go to some of our devices. So you can see um, I have an Axiom 4 here and you can monitor it remotely. And all of this data is, is gonna be able to come in without you having to log into the customer site. So you can check out our matrix using this. Again, if you're using Overseer or something, that's, that's all well and fine too. This does give you uh, the ability to uh, update firmware. So I can update firmware. If you're an integrator and you have this in a home, you can push firmware to it. You can reboot it. You can report an incident or you can open a ticket. If you open a ticket, this will this will actually open a ticket with our company. So this sends a ticket directly to um, our tech support. And what it does is gives them full diagnostic data before they even get on the phone and call you. So they're going to have some information ahead of time and be prepared um, to shortcut the, the downtime if there's an issue. So um, this is coming soon. I imagine this is going to be launched within the next 60 days. Um, so that's kind of where that sits. Um, so that's the interface in the UI. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of, of why we made this change and spent essentially two years rebuilding these, this, this interface from the ground up. Um, and it's got a long way to go. So, I mean, we've built in a lot of firepower, so you're going to see things, um, that are going to be changing as, as we learn and, and, and grow together and you guys give us more feedback and stuff like that. So I'm going to flip back to the PowerPoint and try to wrap that up. So um, best quality picture, we've kind of hammered this, this MCS thing, but basically if you need full native, you, you want to use these cards, the input card, the standard one, the HD base T, the ABDM, the standard HDMI out or the HD based out uh, or fiber, which is coming soon. Those will give you full native. Those do require downstream devices to resync because they have to reacquire new metadata types, new signal types, you know, every time, sometimes even when a movie changes. So uh, that's just the reality of how that works. Um, this is another example of, um, of how to kind of extract the audio and access the system there. Um, and then the mission critical scaling, this is, um, again, when you're looking at seamless switching as the most important element, you're going to get very good picture quality, but these do not support multi-channel audio. So that's the biggest thing you need to remember. Two-channel audio is what these will support. So just remember that and, um, and, and you should be safe with these as you sell these to your customers or your, or your integrators. Um, good rule of thumb there. Okay. Uh, when to use down mix audio. Um, this is a uh, very common these days. I think a majority of the switches we sell are down mix audio at this point. Um, you know, it does eliminate a risk factor too, honestly. So, you know, if, if something gets into multi-channel audio, the customer speakers don't stop working. This will just handle that for you. So it is a safe bet just to put them in. Um, but you know it's gonna it's gonna down mix anything you put in and output it as two channel HDMI path, HD base T path, fiber path is all gonna be uncompressed or untouched. Um, but just on that extracted ports, those will um, those will be there. This product fits a lot of places now. So it was primarily built as a residential product for you know routing high end uncompressed video. Now obviously we've built in some functionality and some features where. Um, this is a good thing to look at for control rooms, hospitals, you know, luxury homes. Obviously, we use it for that a lot. Um, hospitality, courtrooms, bars, restaurants, smaller ones where you don't need to get into um, MX net size distribution. Um, and, you know, really anywhere you need to do video matrixing. So um, that's a, 
it's it's got a lot of firepower, a lot of options, and and our uh, our team here is ready to help you. You know, spec one of these or uh, customize this if you need to. Uh, let's talk about drivers for just a minute. We do have full full host of drivers. Um, all drivers are being revamped right now. Most of them are done um, for the Axiom products that pertain to the new UI that give you the central command that we had talked about, where you can um, where you can basically um, you know tell that any command you want in and it will come out on the other side uh, virtually. So that's all being built in. The new audio volume control is being built in. The down mix quotients are being built in. Uh, with control four, um, SDDP is being utilized. So that's, that's about to happen to where this, you know, you'll, you'll plug one of our matrices in and you don't even need to down, go to the website to get a driver. It just, um, control four just finds it and, and puts it into the system. So a lot of big changes, a lot of functionality you're going to start seeing get better and better constantly, but you do have drivers that are available today. Um, of course, we have the 10-year warranty, so um, that's to top it off. You know, um, those of you that have worked with us for a while know that we um, we take our jobs very seriously, and we really, truly understand that the integrator is an extension of our company. Um, so we don't make this difficult for you guys. If you're in a pickle and you need help, we troubleshoot systems, not products. So we don't, you know, go and look at um hey our product works you're on your own go figure it out we try to troubleshoot the system get everything to work together um and you know we don't leave people high and dry um if there is an issue we we just take care of it so there's um there's that to remember as as we uh start to get this product on the market these are in they're shipping now so um that's it that's all i got is there any questions that i need to answer Yeah, it looks like our, we haven't had any more questions come in, but definitely, guys, type them up right now if you have anything. Uh, that was really, really informative, Matt. Thank you so much for going through this with us today. You bet. And as we kind of wrap up here, um, you know, feel free to write your questions here. But if you do have any questions that come up later or anything that you wanted to know more about, you can just definitely reach out to us. Just give us a call or call your rep um, for AV Pro. Um, we are, you know, have plenty of people here that would be happy to talk to you about this product or talk about future installations that you may have where this product can fit into and how we can you know, use some of these features that Matt went over uh, to uh, benefit you in your next install. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in here. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, for going over this again. We really do appreciate it. And um, uh, uh, we'll see you guys on the next training.